Welcome back to Unladylike Opinions. This is Life at the Lockup, Season 3, Episode 56, I'm Not in Love. Okay, Sean and Sarah. So, Sarah's still trying to walk out, and uh, Sean chases behind her, to her, trying to hurry up, put his shoes and stuff on. She said she's going to call her mom to come get her, and he said he was scared. he was scared to tell her about his kids, his six kids, and, you know, dating another in inmate. Because he didn't want to go, he didn't want it to go like this. And she said, so you effed me and then decided to tell me the truth? Basically, he did. So he tells her, you know, don't call your mom because, you know, she already doesn't like me. And he tells her, you know, just come in the house, calm down, and I won't say anything. You can stay in a, in a um, room and I will stay downstairs in the living room. And he said he going to try to prove to her that that you know he's not a liar and not to throw away what they have and so he gets her suitcase and was like so just come on in and she follows behind him and he tried to say something and she was like don't talk to me and she snatches her bag and said i can carry my own bag and um just give me my space so she said she want to get her thoughts together and figure out what she wants to do so you see her upstairs thinking and then the next morning, you see Sean in the kitchen um, making breakfast or whatever. And Sarah, you know, she just sitting there staring at her nails. And she said she's feeling anxious and wants to get to the bottom of everything. She said he accepted her past. So why wouldn't he feel like she would accept, would accept his? And he didn't even give her the chance to accept it. And he said he was afraid to get hurt again. And he's sorry he didn't tell her. So now she says she understands. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? All that, now you understand. She was like, understands why he didn't. And she doesn't want him to mess up her sobriety, worrying about what he's doing or what he's lying about now, who he's with or whatever. And she asks what his kids and their mom is like. And he says, they do not get along. They haven't been together in nine years. There are no feelings there. And he said, she is too much in his life and thinks that because you are a criminal, you can't be around my kids. Now, Sean, why you... What did you call... I never got the good name. Much as you call her and ask her for advice and stuff, you talk she too much in your business. Your daughter sat there and told you. Not to do this again. You went and did it again. Like, cut putting that all on that girl like that. Like, she the fool to have six kids. You could, baby, it ain't take but one for me to learn mine. So, um, he said, so now that we have started on a clean slate, you should uh go ahead and move in here. And I'm like, what the hell? How we go from this to, oh, yeah, move in, girl. And I'm like, she said she needs time to process everything. She just found out all this stuff and she got to make sense of it. And it doesn't make sense to move in right now. He said, you know, he gave up everything in his confessional. He said, I gave up everything to be with Sarah and move here. And if it doesn't work out, he going to be devastated. You need to be devastated by leaving your six kids in another state to go be with an inmate. But, you know, you ain't worried about that. Shane and Lacey made me mad. He's another dummy. They still talking about this lie detector test while they on their way to the marriage council. So she asked, you know, who I did it was to go to counseling. You know, of course, Lacey said it was her idea and he just agreed to it because of the circumstances. And she was like, what were the circumstances? And, you know, Lacey was like, she like our sex life is basically non-existent. He doesn't want me. He denied it and he he was like, he denied everything that I said, but he took a lie detector test. And then she reads off the lie detector test. She pulled the paper out and reads off the paper. And I'm like, okay, uh, Lacey. Lacey said she went through his phone and went on his only fans. And she said he's only talking to men and he ignored the women. And uh, Shane said he failed a lie detector test because he didn't disclose that he had an only fans. And Lacey, he was like, Lacey is so smart, she's dumb at times. And she tells him not to, the, the, uh, look. the therapist was like, you know, don't do name calling or whatever. And Lacey said, you know, they started their relationship off of being dishonest. So, um, 
that she was like, they started their relationship off with being dishonest. And I'm sitting here like, no, you started off being dishonest because you was dating two inmates at the same time. And he didn't know nothing about it. And then when you told him after y'all got together later on, he did, you know, reciprocate what you did. He cheated. Which I believe he lied. I don't think he cheated. Um, so, um... She said they started off on Shady Foundation and then when they wiped the state clean to have their daughter, but he didn't want more kids. But she didn't want more kids. And but he really wanted a child, so he couldn't uh so she couldn't give him one naturally, so they did IVF. She said so their daughter was playing and she was looking forward to more being more with him. But he gets mad when the baby cries. He doesn't want to feed her, doesn't want to chain her, he doesn't, you know, feel a bum with the baby. And he said when she had the baby, he was depressed. He felt lifeless. He didn't have no job. He had nothing to do. And Lacey always tells him she wished that the baby was by somebody else. And I bet you she said, she, I bet you he he sugarcoated it, but I bet you she said, I wish I had this baby with John. I bet you that what she said. So Lacey said, yes, yeah, she does regret having a baby with, with Shane. She regret marrying him and she is not in love with him anymore. And I'm like, you never was. So then she started crying. And Shane said, hearing her say that, you know, crush me. And the therapist tells him to work on how, tells them to work on how they want things to come out. And she say, Shane is very intense when he is angry and is freaky. And I'm looking around like, did I miss something? Did her and Lacey have a conversation before this started? So obviously they did because then they show flashbacks. Or when John, I mean, Shane just was going off, going crazy. And I'm sitting here like, y'all forget why. Like, not excusing what he did, but she brought John to his house, basically trying to kick him out. Like, come on. So, um, it's, it's, it's clear that she somewhat biased or somewhat, uh, something is missing. And he said he can do better on his end. And she said she doesn't believe him because he said that plenty of times. And she was like, I have fallen out of love with him. And it's going to take, it's going to take for her to get back to that. It's going to take a lot for her to get back to that place. And then she asked him if he was in love with her. And I'm like, you going to ask him there right after you just told him that you was not in love with him. And so he was like, yeah, I love you. I love her. I'm in love with you. And, and, um, and he said, if he didn't want to be with her, he wouldn't be here. And she said she's going to have to dig deep and see if she can live with being with him. And I'm like, if that's the case, then don't be with him, whatever. So, um, Stan and Lisa, pointless. So, they still hanging from the rock wall and rock climbing wall. And she's still asking him about, you know, he's talking to other women. And then she was like, you talking to a girl named Jasmine, whatever her last name was. You've been talking to her online. But, and he was like, no, I haven't. She was like, I know you want to know how I know because I am Jasmine. And Stan said he feel like he's been played and he feels stupid. And you should. And Stan said he thought they was broke up and he can't remember what happened to make him think that. But uh, because and she was like, because we wasn't having sex and I wouldn't put you in a straight jacket. I'm like, you could have just left for there to have sex. You had to say that you put him in a straight jacket. And he said you left and went to the hotel with your friend. I thought it was over. She finally comes down from the rope. I'm like, by the time, I know that man was tired of y'all. And um, she was like, if you actually cared about me, you wouldn't just run off and go to somebody else. And I'm sitting here like, just like you did with Renata. Like, girl, go ahead. And Stan said, who said you have to wait a certain amount of time after breakup to date somebody else? And I'm like, uh -huh. Stan said, you have to move before somebody else takes them, takes them from you. You can't procrastinate and i'm like his words not mad i was like oh lord stan so lisa said she is all about loyalty but you talking to other people and stan said he ain't convinced that she has been faithful uh, at all herself so stan said he willing to try until it hurts and lisa said they both need to just take a minute and be friends and he agrees and he said he not gonna worry about it and there are more fish in that pond and i'm like stan ain't finna a bit more yeah he's still gonna try to be with lisa but he's gonna try to be with everybody else too so um john and christiana so christiana is happy she is you know this is the longest time she's ever been sober in her life 
So then she FaceTimed her mom and we found out her mom, you know, has lung cancer. Or that was so she is currently in a facility where she is going through chemo and radiation. And you know, it's been hard on Christiana because you know Tara is not around. So she gets emotional, you know, seeing her mom like that on FaceTime. And it's sad to say because her mom looks so lifeless right now. And I really hope this don't make Christiana, you know, relapse. So she said now she's the adult and have to be the strong one. So John and Christiana, they go see her mom. And, you know, she's sitting out there waiting on them. And she got her good wig on. And Christiana, you know, cries in her confessional and says that, um, she doesn't know what she would do, you know, without her mama. And John goes, John was like, you want me to get your ride? And she was like, yeah, go ahead, since you really want to. So he go run and get the scooter. And he said he feels helpless because he used he is used to fixing people. And he hates seeing his wife in pain and his mother-in-law in pain, but denying that she's in pain. I really hate this phone. Hold on. Oh, I'm, I'm back. I always doggone scammers call it. So, um, let me find out that with Jen. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, he said, you know, his mother-in-law is denying being in serious pain. And Christiana says she is happy. You know, she's in a nice, secure place where her, where her meds are distributed to her, you know, regularly. And she tells her she missed her a lot. And mama said it's hard not having all her children by her side while she's going through this cancer. And she asked John, you know, can she, can he give her and Christiana a minute? And, uh, she takes off her wig and shows Christiana her bald head. You know, Christiana tries to like hype up and tell her, you know, you beautiful with your bald head, um, with your little bald head and with your lashes on. You look so cute, girl. And she said, you know, she is glad she is the rock for her mom now. And she is here and sober and John sitting beside her while she over there boohoo crying about her mama sucking on his vape. And I'm sitting here like, man, hold your wife, console your wife or something. He just, mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm, sucking on that vape. And I'm like, whatever. So mama started crying and she said she never thought she would lose her hair. And she cries and says, Tara disappoints her so much and she can't even pick up the phone and call to see how her mom is doing. And so they hug each other and mama said she not going to let cancer get her down. So, um, then we get the Amber and Puppy, which wasn't much. Puppy is bringing Amber, uh, Amber drunk to her home. She puts her in bed, puts her in her pajamas and Amber's trying to kiss all over and rub her and trying to get Puppy to get in the bed with her and lay with her like they used to do in prison. And Puppy said, girl, uh, I got to go. I got to go home. And um, Puppy gets in her car and goes home. Then you see Puppy arrive at home and she's telling Eric that, you know, and, and she was like, she come home and Eric was like, I thought you would have been home earlier. And she was like, um, she was like, Amber got drunk and I had to take her home. And she started, you know, acting all gay. And Eric said, see, that is a problem. And Puppy said, she was drunk. And I'm not going to tell you any more, anything else about this. So that was them. So then we get to the last, last but not least, the dumbest. Deontay, Nicole, and Tia. So Tia wants to talk to Nicole. And she said since, you know, her surgery is coming up, they should get married right away. So Tia says she got a lot of health problems. She already has one kidney and now it's her liver. She says she has two tumors on it. And she keep putting off the surgery. And the doctor told her if she doesn't have the surgery, she's not going to live at least eight months. So, Nicole said they don't have time to invite anyone, you know, if they're going to have a wedding this week. And she was like, I want a traditional wedding with diamonds on the wall and crystal flows and stuff. And I was like, boy, she always want the best and ain't got a dime to put on it. So Tia said, if you was my wife, you would be able to make decisions on my behalf. And Nicole was like, we're not going to think like that. And Nicole was like, you know, if you agree to the surgery, I will, you know, marry you. And, um, they in an interview and I don't, and I know they was crying and all that, but they seem like they high as a kite, man. It, it's not even funny. Like, they seem like they just high out their mind sometimes with the slurring of the words and all that and the dragging. I don't know. So, 
Um, and they keep the vape pens in their hand at all times. And I'm like, it's obviously it's more than, you know, vaping in these pens. I don't know. And so Nicole agrees to marry Tia this week. So then Deontay mama comes over to cook for him and she wanted to make sure that he was okay. You know, she said she know you was dealing with a lot with the Nicole situation. And he said he was over Nicole. And she like, I don't believe that. Me either, mama. And so he said he shows that he been on her social media basically stalking and he found out that they getting married this week. That's what he said in his confessional. So mama said, I know you want the family and the love, but the way you going about it right now, you're going to self-destruct. And he said he know he needs to move on, but he thinks she reaching out to him so he can somewhat save her. And then we get to Nicole trying on wedding dresses and mama asks her if she's sure she want to do this. And she looks so small in this dress. It's obvious that it's something, it's drugs or something that's eating away at her. So she tries on another dress and she says she really don't have her stuff together yet. And she probably rushing into marriage, but you know, she is happy. Then you get back over to Deont Deontay's house and you know, our favorite homeboy, you know, pulls up, oops, our favorite homeboy pulls up Derek and Deontay said, I'm glad you showed up because you know, mama was reading me my rights about Nicole. And Derek said, when was the last time you saw her? And he said, when she came to my job. And Derek said, he said it real loud. You said when she came to your job. And he said, you heard that mama? <laughs> I was like, Derek, man, this is what I'm here for. It. So mama said, what? And he said, she came, to, she came to tell me that she's getting married to Tia. And Derek jumped up. And mama kicks her leg and says, stop the bus. Stop the damn bus. And I'm like, where mama get this saying from? So she said, did you need to know all that? And she wanted Nicole to go on with her life and leave her son alone. So Deontay said in his confessional, he think he should go to the wedding because Nicole ain't good at being direct. And that might be, that might have been her way of asking him to come save her. <laughs> then Derek said Derek said he was like I think I need you know to be there and Derek said be there for what and mama said I know you're not considering I'm like yes he is mama so you know back at the bridal shop Nicole you know over there gulping down some water talking about you know she saw dots and she had an anxiety attack and I'm like Whew, I don't know what drugs they on but it is something so, um, Deontay said in his heart, he knows Nicole wants him to rescue her. And the mama tells Nicole not to do this if she doesn't want to. And if you ask me, Nicole is high out her freaking mind and she is hyperventilating on whatever she didn't have food she got there. Everything is piling up at once. So she might be having an anxiety attack, but it ain't just anxiety. It's drug attack too. So, um... That was my review on Love After Like Up, Lock Up, Love After Lock Up, Life After Lock Up, whichever one you want to call it. And like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will get back to you guys later. Goodbye.